Jeremiah chapter 19. Thus saith the Lord, Go and get a potter's earthen vest bottle, so he stood in the potter's house, and take of the ancients of the people, the, the old people. There's a name for social security, called them ancient. And of the ancients of the priests. So these are people who are supposed to know the law, they're supposed to know God. The elders, the, the great ones. And go forth unto the valley of the son of Hinnom. Now this is where they were sacrificing children. This is also, I believe, called the, the, where the city dumped. I believe one of the gates that led to this area was the Dung Gate, Refuge, which is by the entry to East Gate on the east side, and proclaim these words that I shall tell thee. So here he goes again, here's your street preacher, and say, hear ye the word of the Lord. Now he's standing in a spot that is said where they're built, burning their children. He's standing in a spot where the city dump is. How's that for a church? You look over your shoulders and there's a spot probably of ashes of young children. There is sin. Hear ye the word of the Lord. <clears throat> of all that's happened in this area, what do you do? Hear the word of the Lord. You go to a, a abortion clinic. You go in there, tear it down, burn it up. No. You go nearby, properly by the law. I mean the law of the land. No trespassing. You find a, a public spot where you can be, and you proclaim the word of the Lord. Just like Jeremiah is doing. He's at a place where, where children were killed. Knowingly being killed. You suggested we go to abortion clinics on that? I tell you go where, where you where God's called you to go to preach the gospel. But if that's where you want to go, you do it the way the word of God says. You do it rightfully in a lawful manner. And you just preach the gospel. Hear ye the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah. So he's preaching to the royalty. You know, this, this is a guy in the government that can say, uh, Mr. Swordman, yes. Take out your sword, yes. That guy needs his head removed from his body. Okay. That's the power of the king. But in chapter 1, God already told us that Jeremiah is protected. If you want an early suicide, you go up to a king and tell him something that God doesn't tell you on, not on God's side. Nathan the prophet walked up to David and said, Thou art the man. Nathan was protected. And inhabitants of Jerusalem, so it's the king and the population. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Now, when you open that up, I mean, you're going to go to somewhere and you're going to preach the gospel. When you say, thus saith the Lord, it better be what the Lord said. You better not stand as a liar. Last five, six, eight chapters. You better not be a lying prophet. And it's not about the sin of killing babies. It's about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The God of Israel, behold, I will bring evil upon this place, and that I will bring evil upon this place, the which whosoever heareth, his ear shall tingle. You're not going to believe what God's going to do. You're not going to believe his words. Because they have forsaken me. That's the reason. Why are people in trouble? Because they have forsaken God. Why is there troubles in the earth? Because they have forsaken God. 
and have estranged this place. He's at the east gate. He's at the valley of the son of Hinnom. Forsaken. And strange. There's vast sin going on here. East gate. Which, which side did the sun come up? So guess what they were doing at the east gate? Having the sunrise services. Which we'll talk about later in Jeremiah or Ezekiel. I forget which one. I think it's Ezekiel. The sun rising gate. Worshipping the sun coming up in the east while killing your children. Nothing new under the sun. And have burnt incense, incense in it unto other gods. A waste of incense. It's incense, a waste. This is a compound, and I wonder if they were using the holy that God told them they were not to make. And it doesn't say. But the incense that God prescribed, He gave orders by Moses in the law don't you copy. So they may they could be just offering any incense for the for the gods, but it's still a waste because it's not for God. Whom neither they nor who neither they nor their fathers have known, so they got brand new gods, Canaanite gods, the Philistine gods. nor the kings of Judah. They got brand new gods. Gods that haven't ever been worshipped. They were making them up, the imagination of their hearts. They're like the Greeks and the Romans, They're a god of everything. A religion like that today is, is India. Man, they got a God for everything. You couldn't put them on your dashboard. You couldn't put them on your fireplace. There's too many. And have filled this place. Son of Hinnom. East Gate. With the blood of innocence. Those are the children. And God calls them innocent. Blessed is the Lord who will not impute. There's an age of a child that he's held accountable, which you, you don't know. It depends on the child. It depends on the upkeeping. But a child is in innocence until the day that sin is revealed to him. When he comes to the realization that he has sinned, not against mom and dad or brother and sister, but he has sinned against God. Now, when is this being teached to our children today in churches? In Sunday school, in uh, uh, youth groups. That there are sins in the world, there are sins in our lives, and sins violate God. You may take five dollars from mom's purse. You may have told dad that you've done a chore that you did not do. And suffer the consequences from your parents. But when you realize that that sin is against God, that God is watching you, you're no longer innocent. Now, when you take that $5 from your mother's purse and it is revealed and you have been corrected, you have been rebuked, you now know that stealing is a crime. You take more money, you're no longer innocent. When you realize that you have done it against God, although it says in James, to them that know to do it right 
and doeth it not, to him it is sin. To a human it's a crime, to God it is a sin. And before you know that, you are innocent. Here are babies and young children being killed. And they're going somehow, I don't know, I, don't know, I have no idea. But they're going to heaven. You say, what about during the church age and all that? They'll go to heaven. And that's all I can say about as far as the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. If they show up the great white throne judgment, their name will be in the book of life. That I can be sure of. They have built also the high places of Baal. That's the sun god. That's the main god. That's the one you find at the east gate. They have provoked God to burn their sons. See, there it is. Where is this going on? Turn around, Jeremiah. Or maybe not turn around. Maybe Jeremiah is looking at the valley and you know he, he may see his hands going out and this is what's going on and look over his neck and you know this is what you guys are doing you're burning your son you know spraying his hands out this is what you're doing right here and everybody may be facing toward the valley I wonder how many people realize that God knew what they were doing maybe you know some people think their sins you know God never knows I want if it brought a conscience. I want if it brought guilt. Burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings. Where did you see bring your son in Leviticus? I see goats, sheep, pigeons, bullock. I don't ever read in the Levitical law. I don't read in the, in the five books of Moses. I don't read in Joshua. I don't read anywhere in the Old Testament where God says, bring your son for a burnt offering. Can you imagine taking your child and putting him on fire? And I don't know if they killed him before they did it. But I know when it came to the god Molech, now this is Baal, but Molech was this big, brazen kind of statue, ugly thing, and his hands were all mechanical, and you would put a live baby in his hands, and by mechanisms and gears, those hands would take that live baby and throw him into his stomach, and it would be an open stomach, and there were, that's where the flames were. And that baby would go inside that belly of fire. A lie. They banged on drums. And we're going to see that in a minute. To dry out the sounds. And that's going to come up. The drums. Now that was Molech. This is to Baal. Now yes. God told Abraham. Sacrifice Isaac. But did God allow the sacrifice? I think Abraham and Isaac came down the, the mountain having a good old time. He just pictured Isaac and Abraham, you know, talk, you know, Dad, it wasn't for God inside. I got you, kick your butt down and put you on that altar. Yeah, all right, son. Let's go. And then, you know what was smoking when they left? A ram. God just wanted to see how much Abraham loved him. God pursued, God already knew that Isaac was going to be alive. And yet, God laid his son down on a burnt offering. Not a fire is made by man, but fire is made by God for Satan and his angels. 
He took that lamb of God, which would take away the sin of the world, and he put him into the oven of hell. Which I commanded not. And Jeremiah knew about this. This is nothing new to him. You know the news got around. You know what they do down there? That, you know, probably on the calendars. Prepare your children. Fatten them up for bail. You know, like a reverse story of you know, Hansel and Gretel. You know, the witch goes in the oven. Little kids get to eat everything they want. Nor spank it. God never said it. God never commanded it. Neither came it unto my mind. God never had an idea of you offering your children as a sacrifice. Never. He had animals in mind. He told you know what he told Noah? He said, Those animals which are clean before the law, I want you to bring by sevens. Why? I'll tell you why. So male and female can make babies. Babies can be sacrificed to God. And then you can have yourself steak. You can have yourself venison. You can have yourself all kinds of good meat. Because now, Noah, you can have meat. So you got to have animals to live, to make more animals. you got to have animals to give to God. you got to have animals so that you can eat. And no time did God say, I want Jacob, Ham, or Shem to be born on that bar. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that this place shall no more be called Tophet. And that is the word for a drum. Loud drums will be played so you couldn't hear the baby. Nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. So, I mean, it's a slaughterhouse where, where animals are killed, slaughtered. It's what you're doing to your children. And I will make void the councils of Judah and Jerusalem at, in this place. Counselor. And God says, your counsel is going to be, you're not going to know what you're talking about. I will cause them to fall by the sword before their enemy. Why? Because they've been murdering. And God knows it. And they know it. And no one tried to stop it but Jeremiah. So they're going to fall by sword before the enemy. War. And by the hands of their enemies, I mean, by the hands of them that seek their lives, which are their enemies. There are people who want the Jewish people dead, the people of the land, the Gentiles. And their carcasses will I give to be meat for the fall of the heaven, bird food, vultures. Carnivist birds will dine on them. It's a type of Armageddon. And for the beasts of the earth, the Jews here will become alpo for wolves and lions and bears. Come a long way from David who whipped the butt of a bear and a lion. Now the bear and the lion is going to eat the people of the land. Samson fought a lion and killed it. And Samson ate from that dead carcass. Well, that carcass is now, the many, 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 many years later, going to come up and eat the people. I will make this city desolate, alone. Won't even be the crickets to be heard. And a hissing. It's just, it's just an oriental gesture of... What on earth did you guys do? Look at this city, wow. 
Let's stay here for the night. No, no, we're gonna we'll move to another city. This place is a dump. Everyone that passes thereby shall be astounded and his because of all the plagues thereof. You don't believe what, what happened here? That Nebuchadnezzar came in here, man. You you should you should hear the stories I heard that he was doing to those Jews. He took that king and put and killed his son and then poked his eyeballs out. Can you imagine that? He was taking the pregnant women with their swords and they were just ripping them wide open. Why would they do that? Well, I guess because they were already killing their babies. Why not get some more? You reap what you sow. And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters. Why? Look at verse 5. To burn their sons with fire for the burnt offering. Alright, you cook your children, I'll make you eat them. 2 Kings 6, 24 and Lamentations 4, 6-12. Dear, what are we having for dinner tonight? We're having a Reuben sandwich. Oh, I like a Reuben sandwich. Not this one. So where's our son Reuben? He's in the sandwich. Wait. You, you made our son a sandwich? That's all the food we got. I, I tell you, I, I, you know, it, it, you can't mention God here because it, but, you know, I'm glad you you took our two other boys and our daughter. I'm glad you burnt them alive for bail because if they were living today, we wouldn't be able to feed anybody. They shall eat everyone the flesh of his friend in the siege and straightness. Can you imagine that? You take your friend and you kill him so you can have... Spaghetti and friend balls. I don't know it was up. Well, I'm gonna say kind of north, but north of America, there was somewhere some guy, some guy was killing women, butchering them, and he was eating. And the, the sheriff or the police officer would come over to this guy's house and not knowing nothing. And he would dine at this guy's house, and later on, when 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 the crime was revealed, and the man, the sheriff went crazy. To realize what how many times he went over this guy's house, and what the food actually was. Sometimes, I guess, if you're going to eat over someone's house, you're going to have to ask him, "What is this?" Especially this day and age. Where does friendship go? Friends forever. According to the Bible, Jeremiah 19, verse 9 says, Friend forever, if I have to, I will eat you. Remember what Satan told God about Job? And I'm not going to quote this verse verbatim, but he said, Yea, all that a man has. I'll do, man will do anything to survive. That is why health care is, is the biggest money-making thing. Doctor, I'll pay anything to live longer. Don't let me die because I'm going to die without God. Had these people had God, they wouldn't be eating their children and their friends. Lord, you caused the famine. Lord, you, you causing the war. You causing all this. Oh Lord, let, let me repent of the sins that I did. Let me push in your grace. Let me push to you, Lord God. And if you have me die, please, Lord, let me die in your grace. Under the, under the works of the law, you know, Old Testament. Lord, whatever it takes to die in your mercy and grace, I'm not going to eat my children. No, they don't even repent at the fact is. Okay, let's take the child and, and eat him. Let's take your best friend. Let's have him for dinner. 
what, what went on in Kings? Kings walking on the wall. Well, what's your what's your problem, ladies? Well, I took my son and I boiled him. We ate him, and then we went for my other friend's daughter, uh, child, and she hit him. You know? What's the other place? I want you to go down to the grocery store, son. Here's some money, and I want you to go get some ass's head for dinner tonight. Okay, mom. Well, Leah, I want you to go to the to the dove uh, pin we got and, and uh, scoop up some of their poop so I can sell it to to put some stuff in this house for for us. And don't buy the poop. You know what a Christian's attitude would be in something like this? Say, Lord, I love you. I'm saved. I know I'm going to die. I know where I'm going to die. Where I, I know where I'm going to go when I'm going to die. Lord, help me to do as much as you want me to do. But I ain't going to eat nobody. I'll witness to him. Where with their enemies? There'll be enemies all around them. How would you like to be sitting, let's just say, be sitting in a chair and all around you is no one that likes you? While you're having a hand sandwich. And you're crying out to God and God, I don't hear you. And you're crying out to Baal and he don't hear you. Go back to the 400 prophets with Elijah. Baal don't listen. Baal can't even start a fire. Baal can't burn his own offering. Go back and read the story. Baal couldn't start a fire for his barbecue if you lowered the thing with a lighter and lighter fluid. Baal couldn't start it. Now God on the other hand lit it with a waterproof match. And that God that Elijah served will look at you like I'm not listening to you. By the way, that, that friend that you are eating, look at it like this. That friend you're eating, didn't you kill him to have dinner? You're a murderer. Where there in the where is there in the Old Testament an offering for someone who's killed somebody? How about that one? You had to kill him to eat him. Say bye bye salvation. There is no way you're going to go to heaven. Something to think about. Then thou shalt break the bottle in the sight of the men that go with thee. Sounds like to me. I kind of read. Jeremiah asked the ancient the people, not everybody goes with them. The ones that go with them, with me. So he's got this, this potter's earthen bottle. He gathers the people down to this place where sin is, is just crazy. And then God says, break that bottle. And thou shalt say unto them, thus saith the Lord of hosts, even so will I break this people. Now remember the last chapter we read, he said that that clay is Israel. The potter is me. That clay has been made into a vessel. It has been hardened. It has been dried. God is finished with that piece of pottery. Here a bottle. He's done. He tells Jeremiah, grab it. Jeremiah grabs it. He tells him, break it. And he tells him, he says, Thus saith the Lord, I will break this people
when a piece of pottery has been hardened and dry, you can't do nothing more with it. It's done. Now let me ask you another question. After you break the pottery, the bottom, what can you do with it now? Well, Job, you can take it and, and scrape off the boils and the pus on your body. Other than that, there is nothing you can do with it. You might glue it back together, but it ain't going to be the same. And it ain't going to be for the purpose intended. And you're broken. You're, you're, you've been heated, you've been dried, and now you're broken. Doesn't the Bible say that we're to be vessels of honor? I will break this people in this city as one breaketh a potter's vessel that it cannot be made whole again. You're not going to make it back again. You can't turn that, that bottle back into clay. They shall bury them in Tophet till there be no place to bury. How many people are going to die? So many that you're going to run out of spot to grave. That's a lot. That happens in the Valley of Armageddon. I forget, but it mentions that there's a period of time that it's going to take the burying, and somebody's going to walk along and see a body part and stick a flag by it so someone can come along and bury that body part. Thus will I do unto this place, saith the Lord. Now, if God says He's going to do something, and to, and to the inhabitants thereof, and even make this city as Tophet, a graveyard. You know what lives in a graveyard? Death. Dry bones. But I think of a prophet that had dry bones. It will be coming up in two more books. <clears throat> in the houses of Jerusalem. In the houses of the king of, of Judah. Shall be defiled as the place of Tophet. Because of all the houses upon whose roofs they have burnt incense, 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 messing that word up, unto all the host of heaven. So up on the housetop, click, click, click. We're waiting for old Jolly Saint Nick. We got our fireplace lit and with clean. You know the old log. And have poured out drink offerings unto other gods. Come a long way. Then came Jeremiah from Tophet, whither the Lord had sent him to prophesy. And he stood in the court of the Lord's house. Here he's back at the temple. And said to all the people, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring upon this city, upon all her towns, all the evil, that's a consequence of sin, that I have pronounced against it. Ready? Because they have hardened. What's that word go to? That goes right to the earthen vessel. The bottom. It's been hardened. God can't smush it back together again. It's off the wheel. They've hardened their necks. That they might not hear my words. 
and God can't do nothing with them. There is in Jeremiah no repentance. That's how hard they've got. I mean, I'm 46, 47 years old. I don't know how many years I'm going to see, but I'm not going to see many years more. But the Lord tarries a good 20, 30, 40, maybe 50, 60 years. This is what America is going to be like if God tarries. You're going to have one prophet preaching and nobody's going to listen. As far as killing babies and everything like that, isn't that going on right now? I'm not a big thing with with abortion and preaching and all that. That's, that's too personal of an issue to go public about. And it's a sin. But in Jeremiah, let me say, there was one place they killed the, the children. In America, there are many places. And they sacrificed not to Baal, but to career, womanhood, lack of responsibility, lack of respect, just do it. Too costly. It should never happen. There's all kinds of gods in America. And when we get to the end of Jeremiah, Judah and Jerusalem are wiped out. Very few go, go to Babylon. And then when they're in Babylon, we read only five main characters that come out of Babylon that are really righteous with the Lord. How bad is it going to get? Well, let me ask you a question. Let's look at what Jesus had to say as the days of Noah. How many righteous men were in the days of Noah? Absolutely one. How many days were righteous in Lot's time? One righteous man and a worldly righteous man. You see what I mean? Abraham was praying to God. The Bible says Lot was just, but he was living in the world. You had one and a half people. How many people are right with Jeremiah? One. Out of all of Israel, from north to south, how many long time followers did Jesus Christ ever have? How many was his beloved disciple? How many of his disciples do you actually read about that follow Jesus, that is recorded by name, do you see in the works of the book of Acts? Christianity, anybody who is of God and doing right, you are the minority of all minorities. Bible says, straight as a gate, few that enter, few. There's even a fewer that follow the Lord. Jeremiah is the fewest of the few. And sin is running rampant. And we are reading in Jeremiah 19, and my date says B.C. 605. We are in 2015, and killing your children 
are as the newspaper stories in Jeremiah's time as they are in today's time. And what does it come down to? It angers God that he has to destroy the nation. Because it is murder. Plain and simple. And if Judah is killing their children to, to Baal and Molech, would the consequences be what happened to Judah and happened in America and the world today that they have to eat their own children and their friends? I don't know. But that was the consequence. That is the reaping of the sowing that Judah did. They put down killing their children to a false god, and God says, okay, the crops are up. Now start picking. Okay, go out there. Yeah. That's my son. Boil them and eat them. That's my best friend. Put them on the grill and eat them. Or just die. By the way, the army's going to kill and come and kill you anyway, too. The famine will kill you. And there's one thing sure about serving other gods. If there's one thing sure, death is going to come. And then in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. 